they say agriculture is not a rocket science and they are right. It is far more complicated than that as food production depends on countless factors starting with the soil. Good soils produce high yields and a good quality whereas other soils like this produce depressed yields of low quality regardless of seeds, fertilizers, water, machinery, labor and irrigation. Why is that? Because none of these factors, including all of them combined together, cannot compensate for bad soil. Does that mean that soils of the MENA region are bad? No, definitely not. The soils are generally good, but they are almost always ignored and customarily excluded from the equation. The other problem is that we routinely confuse topography with the soils which are not the same. The topography refers to all of those natural features that you see above the surface ground, whereas soil is hidden below the surface, under your feet, and you know nothing about it unless you dig, see, observe and measure it. If you didn't measure it, you don't know how best to manage it, because the most important parameter of your irrigation equation is missing. And your actions, your decisions are based on guesswork and speculations, but not on measurements, facts and figures which you desperately need before pre-designing stage. Up to date, the common approach was to install irrigation system, throw in some seeds and fertilizers, and expect high uniform yields across the whole area. However, there is the point of truth, which comes at the first harvest when we realize that in spite of all of that, our yields are not that uniform. The entire outcome is vastly different from what we predicted in our irrigation equation. Something somewhere went wrong. What do we do now? There are two choices. We can ignore it or we can choose to fix it. Let's summarize it. In this region, Almost all irrigation enterprises are on a large areas with significantly different soils that require different practices. But extremely rare, almost never, crops, machinery, irrigation layout, management practices, land preparation are adjusted according to soils. You can't adjust it <laughs> because you didn't do soil survey, you don't have soil maps to show you where is a good, where is a bad, where is an ugly soil. You simply don't know what is what, where is what. Why you didn't do it, I don't know. But I do know that the cost of the detailed soil survey and mapping is a very low in comparison to the cost of your project. It and is also very low in comparison to major engineering work such as dam and canal constructions, land leveling, um, drilling, pump station, power line and of course irrigation system, all of which can and must benefit from soil survey information. Numbers are simple as experience proved that the uh, soil survey cost-benefit ratio is usually in order 1 to 100, 1 to 150, 1 to 200 or more. Unlike infrastructure, a soil survey is not subject to wearing and tearing or changes in the climate or economy 
or invasion of pests and diseases or uh, water, fertilizer, chemicals, availability and alike. No, a soil survey is a once in a lifetime investment that will outlive any irrigation project and pay for itself many times over. If you have one, use it wisely because a good soil survey with accurate soil maps have the same meaning to an irrigation project as a foundation to a skyscraper. It can protect you from serious headaches associated with the bad choices, costly experiments, project failure and unwanted publicity. If you don't have one, maybe it's time for changes to reconceive the old practices that didn't work for you and try something new, proven working. What do you think? And we came to the last point of truth, which is irrigation projects are very expensive and they are done only once, right or wrong. You therefore have only one chance to get it right or get it wrong. If a soil survey is expensive, then the project failure because of no soil survey is much more expensive.